How does the simple agreement for future equity work? That's what we'll talk about in today's video. Hi, I'm Steve Morris, and I use this Startup SOS channel to provide practical how-to advice for first-time entrepreneurs. So today's topic, the SAFE. Now, the SAFE was created in 2013 by Y Combinator to provide a simpler, more entrepreneur-friendly way of raising money in an early-stage startup. They did update it in 2018 because of some problems that did crop up, and we'll talk about that update in the next video. But for this video, our focus is on the original version of the SAFE and how exactly it works. So the SAFE is an example of a convertible security. In other words, it's a way for an investor to provide a startup with funding today in a very simple, you know, easy to do legal agreement that in the future converts to ownership in the company. In that sense, it's much like a convertible note. They're both examples of convertible securities. We talked about the convertible note in the previous video. You might check that out if you're not familiar with notes and a link to that is up at the top. How exactly does a safe compare to a convertible note? Well, there are some important differences. First of all, a safe has no interest rate and it has no maturity date. Note, of course, always has both of those. Also, the safe, like the note, does convert into ownership in the future when there's an equity investment round. But unlike the convertible note, there is no size requirement for the safe. The safe converts at, at any equity investment. Typically, a convertible note in part of its terms will specify some minimum size for a future equity round that will cause the note to, uh, to convert into ownership. And finally, there's an equity investment round in the future, we'll call it a Series A, that causes the safe money to convert into ownership. Now, the safe investor might receive the same stock, the same preferred shares that that Series A investor does, but very often the safe investor receives a slightly different version of preferred shares called the safe preferred. We'll explain that in a minute. A safe has no maturity date, unlike a convertible note. So how long does it last? Well, a safe will terminate if an equity investment occurs that causes the safe to, uh, to convert into equity, then the safe itself, of course, goes away. Uh, or if there's an acquisition, the safe will terminate. If there's an initial public offering, that terminates it. And finally, of course, if the company goes out of business and shuts down, that terminates the safe. But if none of those four events happens, a safe theoretically can go on forever. There are actually four different versions of the safe. The first one is called the standard safe, and it has a valuation cap, but no discount. Uh, the second has a valuation cap and a discount. The third version has a discount, but no valuation cap. And the fourth version has no cap and no discount, but it has an MFN, a Most Favored Nation Clause. We'll get into that more in a minute. But in terms of caps and discounts, again, we did talk about those in the context of the convertible note. You might check out that video for that overview of caps and discounts. So what exactly does the safe money pay for stock when it converts into ownership? Well, it depends on the scenario. Let's consider the scenario where there's a cap but no discount. If the cap is less than the pre-money value of that future round, then the cap is going to kick in and determine the price that's paid by the, uh, the safe investor. The price is pretty easy to calculate. It's the total number of shares, that's the total fully diluted shares, the number of shares being issued to the new investors plus all of the options that are allocated and the options that are actually awarded, divided by the pre-money cap. And that, of course, will, by definition, be a lower price than is paid by the future equity investors. If the pre-money value in that future round is equal to or lower than the cap amount, then the safe investors receive the same stock at the same price as those equity investors. Now consider the scenario of a discount, but no cap. Well, in that case, the safe investor receives the stock at that discounted price. And in that case, since it's a lower price than is being paid by the equity investors, they'll receive the safe preferred shares. One more scenario, what does the safe investor pay if the safe money has both a discount and a cap? 
Well, you calculate the stock price with the discount, you calculate it again with the valuation cap, and the safe investor gets the lower of those two prices. What exactly is this safe preferred stock as opposed to the standard uh, preferred shares that the equity investors receive? Well, the safe preferred is issued when the safe investor is paying less than the equity investors. If they're paying the same because, say, there was no discount and the cap didn't kick in, then they simply receive the same preferred shares that the equity investors receive. But in the case where the safe investor is paying less for the stock, they have this slightly modified version of shares called the safe preferred. It's identical to the shares the equity investors receive with just three differences. Uh, the conversion price, of course, is different, so that's laid out uh, in the terms. Again, it's the price determined by either the discount or by the valuation cap. Uh, they get a different dividend rate and a different liquidation preference, both based on what they actually paid for their shares as opposed to what the equity investors paid. Now, why is that important? Well, let's use liquidation preference as an example. Liquidation preference is a term that comes into play when a company gets acquired. So let's say there's a Series A investment and the stock price that the equity investors receive is $1. But let's assume that the safe investors get that stock for a lower price because in this case, let's say it was the cap, the valuation cap was lower. And so they got the stock at half the price, say 50 cents instead of a dollar. That's very common to have in a Series A set of terms, what's called a liquidation preference. So in the case where the company gets bought, what the liquidation preference says is that very typically the investors will get paid first. So you've got the proceeds from the acquisition. First, the investors might get paid 1x of what they actually invested, and then their stock would convert, their preferred shares would convert into common stock. And from then on, they would participate in the proceeds with the other common shareholders. So again, of course, pro rata, given what the proceeds are, everybody receives uh, their fraction of the proceeds. Now, that would be called a 1x participating liquidation preference. Again, it's not, not the only way to do a liquidation preference, but that's a very common one. Here's the problem. If I'm a safe investor, I paid half for my shares of what the equity investors did. And unless that's dealt with in the terms specifically, what will happen is I'll get paid as my liquidation preference actually twice the money that I put into the deal. Not 1x, but 2x, because the 1x is based on the equity price for the stock that the equity investors paid. I paid half that. So that's the problem. Without dealing with that specifically in the terms, the safe investor really gets more money than they should uh, in the 1x participating deal. So that gets corrected in the, uh, the safe preferred shares. And that's, I think, the most important difference. Pretty much all the other terms are the same as with the standard Series A preferred stock. Now, we mentioned the Most Favored Nation, or MFN clause, uh, which one of the four uh, examples of the safe includes. That works much like it does with a convertible note, which is to say, if in the future you give a future safe investor better terms than a current investor, that current investor has the option of adopting those more favorable terms. Uh, so in the case of the safe, the version that has the MFN has no discount and no cap. But if in the future you give somebody a safe with a discount and or a cap, then that earlier safe investor has the right to adopt uh, those terms, including the discount and or the cap. Some of the other common terms that you'll see in a safe, uh, number one, pro rata right, meaning that the, the safe investor has the right to purchase additional shares. What if there's a liquidity event, say an acquisition, before the safe money has converted into stock? Well, in that case, a safe investor gets their choice. They can either get their money back, or if it's a better deal, they can take their safe money and convert it into stock at a valuation determined by the valuation cap and receive their funding that way. 
in, in a dissolution, the uh, safe investor has the right to get their money back. Now, of course, that assumes that there's any money to give back. Very commonly, in a dissolution of a company, there's no money left and everybody ends up being out of luck. And then finally, there's some miscellaneous representations. Uh, for example, the investors probably uh, represent that they are accredited investors. And there are some other representations uh, for both investors and for the company. So what are the advantages of a safe? Well, like any convertible security, one thing a safe does is it delays the valuation of the company until you make more headway and you're worth more. So in the future, when you have that priced equity round, you'll sell less stock in the company uh, in order to convert those safe dollars into stock. So you, you minimize your dilution. It's also a very simple instrument. There's very few terms to negotiate. Uh, so it's a, a fairly fast thing to put in place and low cost from a legal uh, point of view. It just doesn't take uh, a lot of legal help to do a safe. Unlike the convertible note, there's no interest rate and no maturity date. So those are certainly both pluses for the entrepreneur. How about drawbacks? Well, really about the only drawback is that it is easy to lose track of the dilution that you're incurring as you close safe money. Uh, the safe uh, really, since it's not purchasing stock at the time you uh, collect the money, you can lose track of how much it's going to affect your dilution when it does convert into stock in the future, in that future round. Now that's one of the reasons why Combinator updated the safe in 2018 and made some pretty significant changes to it. Again, we'll talk about that in the next video. So that's a summary of how the simple agreement for future equity works, the original 2013 version. Uh, if that was helpful, please click the like button and share it with other entrepreneurs who uh, might benefit. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Uh, use the uh, button down in the corner. Once you subscribe, you can also click on the bell icon, which then will notify you when we have future videos. And again, we have at least one more coming up in this series, and that'll be on the series seed, a standardized set of terms for a priced equity investment round. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll certainly do my best to answer those questions. That's it until next time. Thank you very much for watching.